Well, hello! I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing? Beautiful day. And it is mailbag day. But before we get into mailbag, uh, I want to mention, I think most of you are familiar with Dale Lawley, my partner on The Drive for Steelers Nation Radio, former great employee of DK, you know, and one of my best friends. Um, he, he had some medical stuff. He is back in the loop. A lot of folks have asked about him. Um, he's doing well. He had, we announced it today on the drive that he had a, uh, cancer of it in his mouth that he had to get, to get dealt with. And it was a ordeal and he was in the, the uh, hospital for quite a few days and he's back at it and we're back putting material out. So Everyone that asked, I appreciate it. Uh, he's a great dude and is doing well. So here we go. Um, lots of stuff here on the mailbag. Jim asks, can anyone other than Benton make a leap on the D-line this season? It's a good question. I'd love to say Liao. And he's really the answer because he kind of has nowhere to go but up. I mean, could he even get to the point where you're not wondering if he's going to be a healthy scratch or not for the game. You know, is it going to be louder milk or is it going to be Leal? Could he get to the point where he's like easily your fourth best guy or better than like a Lowry, you know, better than Watts from last year or guys of that nature? That would be a leap. So I'm going to say Leal. Louder milk, I don't know he could ever get to that point. Um, Guys like Adams are solid and Lowry are solid. I don't know that Ogunjobi has another step left in him, but I do think one thing about Ogunjobi that's noteworthy, that assuming Benton and maybe others do take a leap, I think less of Ogunjobi is more of Ogunjobi. You know, like if you can, if you can cut his snap count by 25%, you might get 25% more production. You know what I mean? I think he has a hard time sustaining through the course of the game. So he would be a more effective player in more of a rotation. So maybe that's a leap of sorts. Yeah, good question, though. Uh, Bet Online is your number one source for your summer sports this season from Major League Baseball, golf, and NBA and NHL playoffs. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So, lots of other questions here. Joey Bag of Donuts asked, is number two wide receiver not as important because they'll have so many multiple tight end sets? And will that mean a big year for Darnell Washington? The short answer is yes. It's not as important because they're going to be a lot more two receiver sets as opposed to three. Okay. Um, big year for Darnell Washington. He's been on the field a lot. Um, I also think they like these Hayward Pruitt move guys quite a bit, but I do think Washington will be on the field a lot. I'm hoping that he gets more downfield targets. Like I'm not saying he's going to be Travis Kelsey, but his average depth of target was just so low last year. And I do think there are some knee issues there and he's, he was a better combine athlete than what I saw in person and on tape in the NFL, you know, but I don't think he's just an inline blocking tight end either. I do think there's more goodness to mine out of Washington in year two. And historically tight ends begin their careers very, very slowly. It's becoming a little bit uh, a thing of the past, but don't overreact to a slow rookie year for tight ends, especially as past catchers. But back to the receiver thing, I do believe that enough has not been done, though. You know, I mean, because you're counting on Pickens to play every snap in every game. I mean, if they don't have him on the field, the rest of that group isn't going to be effective enough. I mean, with Pickens on the field, 
I have my doubts if that group can be effective enough. You know, so uh, I still think they are going to turn over every rock to try to find a quality starting wide receiver. And then a lot of these issues would go away. But, and I've said this multiple times too, I didn't mean to repeat myself, but I, I do think if Omar Khan was sitting here next to me and I gave him truth serum, that he would say, yeah, I thought I would have landed one by now. You know, that we thought we had a lot of veteran options. None of them quite worked out. But I also think his patience and whatnot is one of his attributes as a GM. And there's a lot of time between now and opening day. And someone will be unhappy or whatever. And I still think that they will bring in somebody else at, at, at wide receiver. But it is less of a deal than it would, would have been a year ago. But it's still a deal, you know. Josiah Jones asks, if the Steelers do not bring Golden back, would any of the -the off-the-ball linebackers make a good edge? Wilson or Roberts off the edge occasionally could be effective. This was maybe my favorite question, because they're going to have four true edges, whether it's Golden or somebody else. I, I mean, and there's a handful of names out there that are similar to Golden that you can get cheap. But I do think a wrinkle of this off-the-ball group now could be like a Timmons, you know, walk down off the edge and truly rush the passer. You know, like I always talk about off-the-ball players that accumulate sacks. Are they good blitzers or are they good pass rushers? And there's an art to both, but blitzing is more schemed up. I get them on a back or I get them coming free. And Robert's, Queen, you didn't mention Queen, and Wilson are all very good blitzers. And I think they're all high quality pass rushers too, as a true linebacker goes. I know Queen is. Roberts is a thumper. I mean, whenever he rushes the passer, it's not a real diverse skill set, but I mean, he will run over backs. And Wilson did it in in college. And Wilson played a lot, actually, on the edge at NC State. So I think you might be on to something. The only thing that I'm kind of disputing you is I don't think it alleviates the need to add one more player there. Like, I still think there's a roster spot open from outside linebacker edge. And I think maybe one of those guys could get you out of a game, but I don't think it'll be the plan for them to do it a lot. But I think they'll do it more than we've seen. You know what I mean? I think that could be a featured part of the defense. Handful of snaps, you know, but more than we used to see. Um, One other note about the linebackers is you almost never see three true off-the-ball linebackers on the field together. But maybe they could do a little of that too, you know, that have a four-man, almost play like a four-three, you know, with two defensive tackles, your two-edge, and three off-the-ball linebackers, if that position is as strong as I think it could be. So getting your best players on the field is important, and it might actually be with two, certainly with two, maybe three off-the-ball backers. Uh, Joseph Maskery asks, Hey, Matt, what do you think the plan is for slot corner? (sighs) My hunch is just reading the tea leaves is... Patch it together, you know, kind of live with what you have. I definitely could see a veteran signing, but it wouldn't be much different than, you know, like last year's guys, you know, you're not going to get a star there because they're, you know, Omar is such a good cap guy and understanding values of positions. My hunch is we might just see new slot guys every year or not. And that's an exaggeration, but don't invest heavy at the slot position. They get beat up quick. You can always find guys that are okay, not great. Maybe with the safety situation in specific you know, scenarios, you see Minka in the slot more. And that makes all the sense in the world to me too. He's really good at it. He's good at everything. But I don't think there's going to be like this huge acquisition of a slot. I think they're just going to kind of piece it together, kind of going to be a Band-Aid position. And every team has a position like that. You can't have high quality, high pedigree, high expensive guys everywhere, but it could be slot here where you just look for 
young, tough guys that'll throw their face in the fan and go for that, you know, and see what you can find. Um, a lot of questions about the receivers. I don't want to keep harping on that, but you know, big B wigs 92 asks is the lack of an obvious number two receiver. Just another example of Omar playing the waiting game or is a receiver room likely set for 2024? I kind of already talked about that. I think he'll do something. I'm not sure what his plan is. I'm sure again, he's turning over every leaf, every rock talking to a lot of people, a lot of GMs of who could be available, but I bet they do something there. And Michael Burns also asked, you know, what up, Matt? I was wondering what the organization feels like. Pat, talking about Fryermuth, is our number two receiver in Roman Austin, and the rest are threes. Maybe. I mean, you're hearing all kinds of great stuff about Roman and Austin, and I don't discredit that at all, and I'm excited about what I've heard and what I know, that maybe those two are ahead of the pack and a little bit better than I may have initially given them credit for, for where they're at in their stage of this career. But OTAs, little fast guys, should stand out. I mean, like, it can't be any easier for them to stand out than in OTAs. So it's not the best barometer. But I will admit that I liked both those players a lot coming out of college. And maybe I was a little hard on Austin with all these moves and didn't give him enough credit as a big step-up guy. He, He could be. Um, that being said, I'm never going to get away from, well, at least not until seeing these guys heavily in camp and preseason that a true number two is needed because the ripple effect, if you have Austin and, you know, Wilson battling out for three, great, but for two, it's still a little frightening. Um, last one for today, Mark H asks, how do you think RB snaps will shape up next season? Uh, Very similar to how they have. Maybe Warren gets a slightly higher percentage than he did. I think he's earned that, which isn't the knock on Najee. We just talked about him earlier this week. I do think he's coming off his best season. But something that was mentioned earlier this week was Najee was more efficient with a little bit less touches, and I'm sure they realize that. But where I want to go with this, though, is Cordero Patterson. Like, Patterson, Pruitt, and Jefferson, I think a lot of people are just looking at it like they're here to teach the Falcon way and the Arthur Smith way. They didn't hire them to be teachers. I mean, sure, that'll be a useful thing. And the familiarity is great. But Arthur Smith likes these guys. That being said, said, or that aside, just talking about Patterson, he's really hard to tackle. You know, like, He never really developed as a wide receiver route runner, but you can line him up at wide receiver and one wide receiver routes with him. Maybe it's a somewhat limited tree. I think he's going to get five carries a game too. Like he really did good stuff with Coach Smith two years ago before they had Bijan as a pure running back in Atlanta, really kind of saved his career. And maybe you'll even see him out there with Warren or Najee, you know, where he, he'll he block. I'm not saying he's Dan Kreider, but I mean, he'll block, but he'll detach. And I, I think he's an interesting puzzle piece that we're not talking enough about because the backfield looks crowded with Harris and Warren, and we've seen that in action and it's worked well. But I would not discredit Patterson also getting a consistent piece of the pie. It won't be a big piece. But I think he'll get a consistent piece of the pie. He's hard to tackle. I mean, that's the biggest thing I can say about the guy. He's hard to tackle, which, great. I mean, they're they're good at getting these guys in space and uh, maybe as a receiver as well. So that's what I got for today. Um, Always feel free to send me questions and I'll get to them, especially in the offseason. It's not nearly as regimented. There are some good ones here as well. Maybe I'll double it up tomorrow. But good stuff. Appreciate it. Take care.